Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello and welcome to session 25 of Principles of Management course. Dear students, I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera from Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. So far now, we have been discussing about various parameters and managerial functions related to the functions which any leader manager has to perform in the organization. In the previous session, we started off with discussion on leadership, where we discussed the phenomenon of leadership and in general various characteristics pertaining to it. I shall be continuing the same topic leadership part 2 in today's session. Now before I proceed let's have a quick recapitulation of what is your understanding on leadership. If I recollect it and if you may also recap it leadership that we discussed is a very complex phenomenon. A phenomenon where a leader is supposed to provide enthusiasm, motivation to the subordinates or to managers in the organization. Why? So as to fulfill the task and goals assigned to the organization at large. Also leadership phenomena is not only restricted to giving this contagious enthusiasm or spark to the employees, but it also pertains to having a vision for the organization. This vision which is a mandatory requirement the leader has the steering wheel in the hand and he can only guide the members which way to move or what is the next path or journey for organizational life cycle process. So let us start with the discussion on leadership, leadership in general, some characteristics and followed by primarily various styles of leadership which are or approaches of leadership which are followed in organizations and as a management student you must have knowledge about the same. Let's proceed further then. So as we all know, one of the famous researchers in the field of management, Mr. Peter F. Drucker, he has talked about management and leadership. What he mentioned is that management is doing things right. So you have been assigned with a task and you are doing that task appropriately. That is management. While as compared to management, leadership is different as it talks about doing the right things. So doing the right things here is different goals of the organizations or mission or vision of organization which is drafted by the leader which is unique in itself and that makes the organization different from different organizations. So to lead means is to guide, direct and integrate the efforts of people of the organization and what are people of organization we also call them as internal customers towards a common goal achievement. So that means we may say that leaders are those people who have a capacity to influence the behavior of others without having to rely on any force or people whom under others accept as leader. So here most important phenomena is that leader is influencing the behavior. By influencing we mean to say that leader is ready to modify the behavior of the individuals or subordinates under him. Now why the phenomenon of leadership is important? So that it can provide high amount of clarity in communicating the various ideas, thoughts, philosophies or the methodologies to carry out, out the work. It also enhances the enthusiasm, morale and motivation of the employees so that they are in a get going position. It facilitates the change management process as it is mandatory to have a growth in the organization. We need to come up with change. Change which is inevitable phenomena. Every organization has to go for it. Leadership felicitates also the plan process of planning because planning leads, planning is all about finding out the path to achieve the goals. So thus leaders involvement in planning is of utmost importance. When we talk of employee relationships, so here we are talking about the 
interpersonal relationship that organization members share with each other and if there is any conflict in these relationship the resultant is non productive worker or non achievement of the goals so thus it is required that employee relations need to be harmonious and leaders intervention can make it a brighter or more cordial relation between people in the organization and finally the most important part is crisis management which is also called as contingency situational handling so this is done by the leader manager here he has some plan b in order to rescue the organization from any kind of bad scenarios like liquidation or bankruptcy or maybe any kind of competitive move that the competitor has made so here we have talked about why leadership phenomena is important in the organizations talking about some characteristics of a leadership so here what we want a person who is a leader must have these essential characteristics in them because unless otherwise leader has this these characteristics it would be difficult for him to carry out various functions which we have already mentioned in the previous slide that is having a high morale good employee relations crisis management change management etc so these characteristics which we shall be discussing now help the leader to attain effective orientation of goals so first characteristic is that we expect leader to be sympathetic why what do we understand by the term sympathetic here we wish to say that leader need to understand what are difficulties and challenges that his members are facing or maybe in professional or personal level any kind of empathy required by the employee should be catered by leader in the organization this is how they develop ocb organizational citizenship behavior between employee and the employer if they have this sympathy element with them next concept is steadiness steadiness belongs to that the leader need to have a reverence of things here the leader has to be in a specific pattern moving ahead by showing examples and in a steady stable manner so any steady leader will gain reverence and trust which is very crucial to get the support from the team and the group next is uprightness the leader also has to be very honest and upright about the issues and concerns and make it highly probable that they will be addressed at proper time because such traits pave the way for better valuation and growth so honesty and timeliness are two virtues that leaders must possess next we talk about direction as i already told you that the vision or steering wheel is in the hands of the leader and he has to identify the proper direction where the organization has to go and this direction has to be in terms of the flow of wind flow of wind here is not a scientific phenomena flow of wind here means that how competition is moving how various uh, economic policies of a country are uh, moving or what are various different norms of country or different cultures that we have to abide by so in order to reach to the desired goal having a specific direction is also important on the part of the leader then coming on to communication transparent communication is what is solicited from the leader because with the help of transparent communication we can think of resolving the issues and which will enable eventually the people of organization to remain motivated another aspect that the leader must possess is flexibility now flexibility means open mindedness of a leader towards increase in the possibility of finding most optimal solution so open mindedness and flexibility means that it paves path for creativity you may give this platform to your employees so that they have do not have a fear of failure rather if they share their ideas that idea sharing can generate a specific optimal solution for tomorrow so thus flexibility is also one of the important characteristics we require in the leader then comes faith and belief so this is basically having faith in the mission that you are going ahead with and 
you have a belief that if you work hard along with the team, the leader should have that belief that if he works hard with the team, the faith and belief of leader then tomorrow inspires the followers. Complexity resolution is resolving the issues and managing complexity are very important traits for the leader for the in the fast changing situations. Strategic action is something which a leader needs to have in terms of having a forward thinking approach towards organization. Thus, to have specific strategies planned for maybe short term, a two or three years or for long term that is up to 10 years. Environment for innovation is very much required to have something called as competitive edge. So, this competitive edge is your unique character as an organization which is which makes your organization different than the competitors and because of this innovation and competitive advantage you achieve above average returns and tomorrow you can have sustainable growth as well and you can take your business to the next level. So having said this students we have discussed about what are the various characteristics of leader let us quickly understand the difference between the two terms leadership and management though I have already discussed the broad differences and in-depth understanding of differences between leadership and management in the previous session on leadership but just to have a quick recap of the same so that we understand it better leadership is necessary to create the change while management is necessary to achieve orderly results. So, this is more of an admin phenomena and this is more of a strategic phenomenon. Now, let us have some deliberations on a term called power. What is power? Power is the authority which is vested in the position, position that a person holds. So, that person can be a managing director, can be a CEO can be a COO. So, whatever is the position or a vice president. So, the authority which is vested with this position is called as power and since what I have written here are all higher level leaders. So, we call this as that there exists a relationship between leadership and power. Let us try to understand how we have different kinds of powers that leaders can exercise. Before that quickly summarizing power it is the ability to affect behavior of others but this ability to affect the behavior of others also comes from if you are authorized to do like your teacher is authorized to modify your behavior but someone who is standing on a road along with you waiting for a bus is not authorized to affect the behavioral change but in general of course yes if someone sets an example for you he can be a political leader, he can be a movie actor, he can be your par they can be your parents, your teachers, your siblings. Then we say that yes, they are exerting their power, the ability that they have to influence behavior. Influencing the behavior means again bringing in change in desired, change to desired behavior. So, five kinds of power that we would be discussing includes legitimate power reward power, coercive power, referent power and expert power. Let us discuss these powers one after the other. Now what is legitimate power? All people occupying the same position possess the same legitimate power in the organization. So legitimate power is the power which is granted through the organizational hierarchy. It is basically the authority that we discussed just now authority that a person carries because of his position in the organization and here some manager exercise this authority but not the leadership. How we say that if refusal of employees to do tasks not given in the job set job description so that means the legitimate power is not being exercised properly. So, legitimate power is power to make the change or the authority which is vested in the position of the leader member. <coughs> the next power that the leader carries is that is having a reward power. Now, what is a reward power students? 
if you do something good you get a chocolate back home and if you do something which is prohibited probably there is a scolding so this is the reward power your parents possess towards you similarly the leader also possesses a reward power where he has the power to either increase the reward or to decrease or withhold the rewards so when the manager sees that a behavior modification is required he may then withhold the rewards like he may deduct some salary he may not give promotion to the subordinate and if he feels that the person is with commitment moving ahead and wants to give him a little more reward then he can increase his rewards that is by adding some variable pay some perquisites and benefits to his salary so here reward power is to give or withhold the rewards and this can be as i mentioned bonuses promotion or recommendation or recognition or giving some interesting job assignments so in general greater the number of rewards a manager controls now here this is very important if a manager is controlling high number of rewards then the more important the rewards are to the subordinates greater is the manager's reward power so what what do we mean by more important rewards to the subordinate if the reward is say for example 50% of variable equivalent to variable pay equivalent to 50% of salary so it's a very big reward for any subordinate and if this is in the hand of the manager then the manager has a higher reward power and when manager has a higher reward power there are greater chances that subordinate will listen to the manager more seriously then comes the coercive power coercive power of leader is all about having a firm control over the employees so it means that you have to go for a forceful compli compliance with the norms and whatever rules has been given to you in the organization coercive is basically giving a punishment or being very tough with your subordinates this is also a power that leader possesses because of the position that he holds in the organization so it is used to force compliance by means of psychological emotional and physical threat to anyone but usually in organizations it is in general we are talking about but when it comes to a manager usually it is limited to verbal and written reprimands so verbal and written written reprimands can be giving a memo to the member to come to the disciplinary norms or can be disciplinary layoffs some fines to be imposed maybe demotion or termination of the employee based on his behavior then comes the referent power what is referent power referent power is the influence that a individual leader exerts because of the personal power that he possesses over the subordinate so for example someone who is very famous as an athlete or maybe an actor or a politician or a leader business leader who can become an idol for you so he is an idol for you you are referring him tomorrow to grow like him so that is the reference power that person possesses without even knowing that there are numerous followers for me this person who is a referent leader gives away those vibrations to the persons who are following them their subordinates or followers unknowingly and unintentionally so it is the personal power that comes to a person based on identification imitation loyalty or charisma like famous athletes or movie stars etc so here the power is abstract not concrete as i told you it is the person concerned does not know that people are following him or so many people are following him or idolizing him employees give this person power over them because he or she likes them in personality background and attitude so silently also you know the employees can like the personality of their leader and try to imitate them or imitate their charisma because of which they improve themselves then comes expert power expert power of the leader is based on the knowledge that the person concerns so everyone who has a greater conceptual knowledge has a greater power across the organization over others because he is then liked by everyone 
because of his expertise in that particular field. So, expert power is the again the personal power like the referent power that comes to someone based on the information expertise that he carries. So, the most important the information and the fewer people if the information is most important and only less number of people know that. So, for example, you want to learn a language called Python. Okay. So, you know that only less people or fewer people know this. So, the person having knowledge about this particular field will have higher expert power who have access to it and greater is the degree of expert power possessed by the individual. Now, how does a manager or leader use the power? So, they use the power by legitimate requests that they make through the organizational communication pattern, compliance instruments where they tell the employees that these are mandatory requirements for them to follow, coercion is little bit of being firm, rational persuasion is giving them logic and persuading them to move ahead and follow the instructions, personal identification uh, is through the referent power or charismatic power, then inspirational appeal is giving a motivation session to the workers or the employees so that they understand what is the relevance of following these norms and information distortion can also be there. Though information distortion is something very negative wherein wrong information or filtered information may be passed on to the members, but again it comes under the purview of the leader how he can use it. He can use the same information for getting the task appropriately. So, we have quickly going through the legitimate request is the subordinate recognizes that organization has given manager the right to make the request. So, this right to make the request is the legitimate request. So, this is most day to day request is the example for the same. Instrumental compliances subordinate complies to get the reward to the reward that the manager controls. So, agreeing to work overtime gets praise or a bonus and this praise or a bonus is the reward which manager controls. Coercion is telling subordinate or giving him some reprimand or firing him if he has not done something. Rational persuasion is when manager can convince the subordinates that compliance is in his or her best interest. So, here transfer may be good for his career. So, telling him why he is being transferred is a rational persuasion example. Coming on to personal identification, a manager recognizes that he has referent power over a subordinate and shapes the behavior by becoming a model for subordinate to imitate. Now, this is the personal identification and inspirational appeal is depends in the part of the persuasive power and referent power of manager. So, inspirational appeal can have a plea for loyalty to the organization that please be committed, please be sincere towards the organization. If organization grows, you eventually will also grow. And finally, information distortion is manager distorts or withholds the information from a subordinate to influence the behavior. So, this can be in a positive context, de deliberately information has been distorted so that the person can modify the behavior. Now, coming on to a concept of leadership styles. What are leadership styles? Styles are ways or methods by which leader utilizes his power. Power which we have talked a lot about, different kinds of powers that the leader possesses. Now, how will he execute these powers with the help of certain styles? So, there are broadly three styles of leadership and out of which one style is further divided into further three categories. Let us see what are different styles of leadership. So, here leadership style is an approach an individual follows while leading with others. So, while uh, usually the leadership style is a lead, leader selects basically it depends on his behavior, nature, thought and process. So, whether you will go for style number 1, style number 2, style number 3 or sub styles of style 2, it will all depend on what is your particular nature and thought process or perception. So, let us see what are the styles. The styles includes autocratic leader, participative leader and free reign leader. Further, participative leader is divided into three categories, consultative, consensual and democratic. Let us study all these styles in detail. 
starting off with first the autocratic style. Now autocratic style says do what I say. Do what I see means that I am dictating you. You follow whatever is being dictated. In autocratic style the leader decides and instructs the team and the subordinates to follow him and implement his decisions. Here employees play no role in decision making. So this is an important learning here. If someone becomes an autocratic leader then they do not have any inputs in decision making. The followers of this style believe that close supervision is essential to get the work done by the subordinates. So here followers are not employees but followers are the leaders. Leaders who follow this style of leadership they have a belief that close supervision will lead to getting the work done properly. So characteristics of an autocratic leader is he is very clear about what he has to perform, he is highly responsible, he goes for very less discussion with the subordinates, is he is extremely confident of himself that is why he is not involving anyone else in the job, he is very much structured in his way as he is very clear so he is structured as well and he himself is very decisive. He has the capacity to take decisions so he is not relying on decisions by the other people. Now here one important aspect is that say A is the autocratic leader and B, C and E are different managers or followers then what is the leadership style? He will go be dictating all. This is this graphic depicts the autocratic style of leadership. Next is participative style of leadership. So participative leader the one who believes in this philosophy believes in that let us work together. So he is more with amicable environment and this, this term itself suggests that decision making is also done in consultation or participation by the members. So how do we present participative leader. So for example A is a participative leader and B, C, D and E are his followers then this participative leader will allow each members to talk and discuss with each other also and discusses with each member too. So this is how we define participative style of leadership. So it consists of three subtypes of followers. Uh, categories. First the consultative participative leader. So the term suggests us here the leader takes the opinion from the group members before coming to final decision as the graphic also suggests. At the same time these leaders make it very clear that the final decision will be made by them. But of course the chance to showcase the creativity or the idea by the follower is also given in terms of sharing of opinion. So here the leader consults the follower. Second participative style of leader is consensual. So here these leaders believe in motivating the group members to discuss the issues and then conclude. So a consensus is reached. Unlike consultative, a consensus is reached on some issue pertaining to decision making. The third style in participative leadership is democratic. In the democratic leadership model, the group provides the input and may even put the decision to a vote, but the leader ultimately makes the final decision. So some kind of voting can be done and some input is given. So democratic means that you have a right to speak in various meetings. So this is how we describe participative style of decision making. Now here what is more important is that in participative style of leadership it consumes a little more time, more time as compared to autocratic leader. In autocratic leader the person was 
taking decision himself so he was taking less time as he is the single person who has to come to conclusion while in participative style there are more people involved in decision making because of consultation and consensual or democratic characteristic of it so it delays the de decision making process after participative the third style of leadership is called as free reign style of leadership which is also given a term laissez faire which means i go and you work so if we may present it in the form of a graphic if a is the leader then what he does with the subordinate he tells the subordinates about the resources about the goal and also about the timeline to be done within which they have to complete the task and also gives them some direction if they need it but he stands outside he oversees or observes them from a far off situation and lets them work and complete the job this is called as i go and you work i am giving you the platform for working so it is a laid back leadership style wherein leader gives entire freedom to the group members to identify the goals and objectives also to make decisions and resolve the issues here the leader plays the role of a consultant and a guide as i told you he gives them all inputs which are required so this style proves to be effective when the members of the group are highly competent they are experienced they are skilled they are highly educated very responsible and self motivated so whom we are talking about we are talking about these members if they have specific characteristics then the leader can trust them and rely on them and leave them to complete the task so for example the free reign leadership style occurs in a research and development section of the industry because in research and development we need high amount of creativity and innovation for that such atmosphere is required so students after different styles of leadership let us move on and understand various leadership skills that are to be possessed by specific leaders so under that category the first skill is the administrative skill what is administrative skill it majoritarily de defines the skill a person carries to carry out day to day routine operational work in the organization because if you have made policies and plans they need to be executed and after execution the evaluation also has to be done so this execution and evaluation comes under the administrative part and leader must also possess this skill because only if he understands all the nitigrities of this operative work then can he give right guidance to the members if they are going away from the required norms or standards second skill that the leader needs is communication skill communication skill a leader requires because he has to communicate very crystal clear information to the subordinates if subordinate has filtered information or half information or incorrect information it is then very difficult for subordinate to continue the task and accomplish it we can't even think of higher standards because even accomplishment of task will be a challenge then so communicating at the right time through the right channel to right positional people in people in the organization it is much required that the leader must possess their respective communication skills both verbal and non verbal third is the interpersonal skill now when we talk about interpersonal skill it primarily relates to how we are maintaining a balance between the personal professional relationship that we are having in the organization here in interpersonal skills we have to see that people are at the same platform in psychological contract with each other they are in an adjustment power with each other and they listen to each other understand sympathize empathize with each other and there are least conflicts between them with such an environment which is very congenial it will be easier for growth for both individual and organization so a leader is responsible also to have high amount of positive interpersonal relations in the organization 
then comes the conceptual skill now students when we talk about conceptual skills something which is very important is the knowledge so if the leader has the knowledge about the environment where he is surviving now what do i mean by the environment that is what are the other firms in the industry where he is surviving and what are different strategies of the other firms where other firms are moving how business policies are moving which are government policies or how economic policies and reforms are moving how technological advancement is taking place what are the lifestyle changes of the consumer this these are the aspects which a leader must know along with how the organization needs to be functioned so this knowledge explicit and tacit both is required and this is the conceptual knowledge for the leader if he has this conceptual knowledge then only he would be able to further decide the move for the organization so till now we have discussed about styles of leadership and various skills required by the leader let us proceed further and try to understand few more approaches to leadership right now let us see what are these approaches to leadership first is the transformational leadership approach now students if we talk about transformational leader it suggests that the term itself says that he has the ability to transform transform from the current situation like we know that a caterpillar transforms into a beautiful butterfly so that transformation of form and shape and size takes place so similarly the organization also has to keep itself changing from the current size stature and position with respect to market growth and who will decide on it if the leader has that approach to transform the organization to be ready for the change and has the appropriate knowledge for that so let us see how transformational leader works so this particular term was introduced by presidential biographer james mac greger and transformational leadership revolves around mutual contribution of leaders and followers to advance to the next level of morality and motivation in the organization so it has been seen that transformational leaders are generally spirited zealous actively involved in the processes and they try to take out the best in every member of the group that is they are highly creative to transform further transformational leadership theory aims at creating high performance workforce also special emphasis in this particular theory is given on elevating the motivational level of the members or the team which is considered to be essentially the task of the leader and transformational leader theory is based on this particular pretext there are four components of transformational leadership which talks about intellectual stimulation individualized consideration inspirational motivation and idealized influ influence so what do we mean here so these need to be different characteristics of a leader who is a transformational leader now what is intellectual simulation here the leader encourages the follower to come up with new ideas and explore the new ways and the opportunities the second is individualized consideration under individualized concentration this leader allows the member to come up with a free flow of information exchange and ideas also are exchanged between the leader and the members so that the leader can offer direct credit which is very important to the follower who has given their 
specific ideas and information. So, if in school you have been asked to suggest some new ways and means by which students can have better engagement in classroom and you share that idea directly with your principal or respective teacher, then you get some credit for it. So, that credit can be a pat on your back, an appreciation letter or maybe some goodie bag. That is called as individualized consideration, considering each member who is contributing the idea. Next is the inspirational motivation. Here the leader who is transformational leader will communicate the passion, dedication and motivation to the followers to fulfill the organizational goals. And the last one is idealized influence. What is idealized influence? Here you have leader as an idol, an idol whom you follow, who impresses the followers and because of this impression or influence the follower changes the behavior pattern according to the requirement or desire of the leader. So, I hope students you have understood various components of transformational leader. It starts from intellectual stimulation, individualized consideration, motivation and inspiring people and giving becoming an idol for the people. But everything as has two components, there are also some criticisms of transformational leadership approach. So, this transformational leadership encourages self promotion and impression management by the leader. So, that is why it is criticized by various authors. This theory is a mix of many leadership theories. So, manipulations might be done by the leader and there are chances of losses occurred by the followers. So, one of the example for transformational leadership that we can discuss at this moment includes transformational leadership theory implemented at a nursing center encourages nurses managers who are effective communicators to meet with nursing staff so that complaints and recommendations are discussed. Further, the nurse manager who communicates effectively will allow staff members to voice their worries and have reverence for employees by patiently listening to them. Also, the nurse manager should be inspirational and trustworthy and work on effective stakeholder engagement by promoting teamwork and collaboration which can give rise to new ways of service delivery at the center, ensuring its positive impact on the patients. So, what is the outcome that we are expecting? We are expecting high or positive kind of new service delivery by the nursing staff and how that can be done? If the transformational leader is giving them voice to communicate freely and also nurturing them in terms of promoting teamwork and collaboration. So, this is how a transformational leader can be successful. Coming on to transactional leadership approach. Now, students we have talked about transformational leader, transformational leader who, who has the important characteristic of giving a platform to employees to voice themselves and encouraging teamwork. On the other hand, transactional term itself suggests us where the more of paperwork shuffle or communication or information sharing takes place between the leader and the subordinate. So, what transactional leader approach talks about? Leaders who guide or motivate their followers in the direction of established goals by clarifying the role and task requirements. So, in one way they are communicating the different tasks, roles, goals to the members. Information exchange and ideas between leaders and members so that leaders can offer direct credit to the follower. This, these are the characteristics of transactional leadership. Now, there are also some dimensions of transactional leader. 
these dimensions include active management by exception and passive management by exception. We shall discuss this in detail. Also, there are two more dimensions of transactional leadership, situation dependent rewards that is contingent rewards. also called as contingent rewards and laissez faire the free reign leadership style that we have already understood. So, let us see this dimensions of transactional leadership, passive management by exception. So, transactional leaders intervention happens when expectations are not met or when the quality of task gets deviated from the standards. So, they may even use punishment for unacceptable performance. This is called as passive management by exception. Management by exception we have discussed in the initial sessions of this course where we identify a unique incident or phenomena. And based on this unique incident and phenomena, which is basically an exception, we try to rectify this exception and bring the process back without deviations. So, here in this case, the exception can be the quality of task with which it is being done, if it has deviated or when expectations which were or the tasks or role which were not given not properly sorry which were given were not properly carried out by the members. Another management by exception is which is done active on active basis. So, transactional leaders actively monitor the work and performance of their members and see if there exist any divergence from a set of standards and rules and take remedial action to prevent the errors. So, this is also important here. Here remedial action is being taken to prevent error and the passive exception by management was punishment was given to rectify the error. Coming on to the other two that is contingent or situation based rewards. Rewards are based on the achievement of mutually agreed goals by making available necessary resources they set SMART goals for their members. So, SMART goals which are achievable targets and they are measurable also and they can be set properly. Laissez faire is opportunities are given in multifold to members when in leaders themselves start avoiding making decisions of their own and of course, in the due course the group starts lacking the direction because laissez faire can be good for a shorter duration of some project, but for long duration there may be chances that the motivation level goes down or the direction is wavered by the members. So, these are four different transactional approaches to leadership. Coming on to some assumptions of this theory of transactional leadership, it assumes that employee motivation will happen through rewards and punishment. That is why they have active management by exception and passive management by exception. There is a strict superior subordinate relationship unlike in the transformational leadership and the leaders monitor the performance of the subordinates and control is exercised to get the work done from them. So, these are certain assumptions in transactional theory. Along with assumptions, there are some implications of transactional theory. What do we understand by implications? Implications means some kind of outcomes of the theory. So, what are the outcomes? High level of emphasis on short term goals, standard rules and procedures are given. Not much importance is given to team members creativity and generation of ideas. This goes in line because we already have rigid rules and procedures. So, how can we have creativity? It is difficult to have both simultaneously and style of leadership works well for simple organizational problems. So, transaction leaders go to length to cut the cost. They are very much into cutting cost and improving productivity. 
Also, transaction leaders are very highly focused on professional achievements from an organizational point of view. So, when we say they are more into professional engagements or professional achievements, that means they do not share emotional bonds, which were the characteristics of transformational leadership. So, transactional leader is more concerned towards monetary benefits. Let us with the help of a graphic see that what are different phases for transactional and transformational leadership. Here you can see the transactional leader. Here we have a graphic from ineffective to highly effective. This axis is from passive to active. So, let us see what are the styles of leaders which are ineffective and passive this way and effective and active. So, we start with the transactional leadership characteristics fall under the category of ineffective and generally the passive one. So, laissez faire management by exception and contingent reward under the transactional category in this quadrant and in the quadrant which is more active and effective we have individualized considerations, intellectual simulation, inspirational motivation and idealized influence which are the characteristics of transformational leader. So, here if I may ask you students about a concept what is better this clearly shows that it is always good to have a approach of transformational leadership in the organization in comparison to transactional leadership. Coming on to another very important uh, leadership approach and this is called as authentic leader. What do you understand by the term authentic leader? Authentic leader is a leader who has his own value system, his beliefs, he is very genuine person and he trusts everyone. So, the basis of authentic leadership is trust and the leader believes in collaboration, communication and giving platform to the employees. So, authentic leaders are ethical people who know who they are. They are very clear about what are their own characteristics and they do not shy away from their characteristics. They know what they believe in and value and act on those values and beliefs openly and candidly. This is very important. Primary they trust the followers or the subordinates. So, how do they trust or how do they build the trust? They build the trust by sharing information that is having a clear information dissemination to the people, not keeping them in any kind of ambiguity. Encouraging open communication between the members. Now, what is open communication between the members? Here, the authentic leader is giving the platform that they have a platform to showcase their ideas as well and sticking to their ideals. What are the ideals? Ideals are the value system or the ethics that they follow. They stick to it. By this what is what does it mean? This means that they practice before they preach. So, this is the ma major characteristic of the authentic leader. Then coming on to trust in leadership that is in authentic leadership, the positive expectation that another person will not act opportunistically is the category or characteristic of trust. You tell him everything because you believe in he will not mis misutilize the information communicated. So, the authentic leader also behaves or thinks in this manner that other person will not be an opportunist composed of blend of familiarity and willingness to take the risk. This is also an ability for the authentic leadership. So, key terms in trust in leadership is integrity. So, what is integrity? Integrity means honesty and truthfulness. Competence is an person's technical and professional expertise. 
consistency is an individual's reliability and good judgment. Loyalty comprises of a person's ability for protection and safe saving face. And openness leads to reliance on a person with full faith that he will give you correct information. So what are different types of trusts? We have deterrence based trust, identification based trust and knowledge based trust. Let us see what is deterrent based trust, trust which is based on fear of reprisal is when the trust is violated. So fear is if the trust is violated what will happen? That fear is because of which the trust is developed. Trust based on knowledge is because of the behavior predictability. You have the ability as a manager that you can predict the behavior of people thus you are creating that trust because you have dealt with the person in some history back. Identification based trust is based on a mutual understanding of one another. So we identify each other and we know each other's intentions. So thus we trust each other. We trust each other because of fear, we trust each other because we can predict our behavior, we trust each other because we know each other's intention. Moving further, fundamental premise for trust is mistrust will divide out the drive out the trust, trust begets trust, trust can be regained mistrusting groups self-destruct and mistrust generally reduces productivity. So these are various kind of pretext or premise for the trust. Now there is another term which is ethics in leadership. Ethics in leadership talks about that as the moral leaders of organizations, CEOs must demonstrate high ethical standards and socialized charismatic leadership should be always modeled for the ethical behavior. So ethics is one of the most critical parameters for effective leadership. So with this students we have tried to gain insight on various approaches to leadership which included transformational, transactional and authentic leadership. We also discussed about trust factor, how it is dealt with in the leadership concept and what is the role of ethics in leadership. Before that we tried to understand various styles of leadership and different characteristics and powers associated with leadership phenomenon. While going through this particular, uh, while making this PPT, I refer to certain books and this is the bibliography which I have various books which I have referred to develop the material for this particular PPT which you may also deal with. So this is all from my side on leadership context. We will continue leadership in part 3 as well where we shall be discussing about various theories of leadership. Thank you all.